as we all uh, provide support and help, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, of course, what well, NATO's main task is in a way to mobilise resources from nations, and 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 of course, nations are now also focused on their own needs because this is a crisis which, which affects us all. Very often, when we face a crisis, it's a crisis which is only face, uh, affecting one or two uh, or a limited number of nations, and then, and then the other nations can provide support. This time is a bit different because everyone is affected. Uh, so what we are uh, calling on allies to do is, of course, to see if they have any spare capacity. And actually, quite uh, a few allies have spare capacity and then allocate these spare capacities uh, to uh, uh, other allies. Germany, for instance, have uh, uh, taken patients from, uh, from, uh, from Italy and from France and uh, given them treatment at uh, hospitals in uh, Germany. The Czech Republic have provided equipment uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to Spain and Italy. So, so there are many examples of how we help each other. We will have a, a foreign ministerial meeting in NATO tomorrow, and there we will discuss how we can step up and speed up our efforts to do even uh, more. So uh, military uh, capabilities are already important, but of course we can uh, see what more we can do, because this will last, this will take time before we're able to call off all the measures uh, needed in the fight against uh, uh, the crisis. That meeting that you're going to have of foreign ministers, um, walk me through what you see coming out of that conversation, because at this point you've already got, you know, over 30,000 people in Europe have been killed by COVID-19. More Americans have died from COVID-19 than died in 9-11. That got you guys into Afghanistan. Wouldn't it make more sense at this point for NATO to take a bigger role in its own backyard? Well, I, I expect that the foreign ministers will do several things. First of all, they will demonstrate unity, in, in, uh, both in, by, uh, by declaring uh, strong political support to each other in a very, 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 very difficult time. But, of course, actions speak louder than words. So I also expect them to see how we can further step up and speed up uh, our uh, joint uh, efforts. This is a common enemy, a common invisible enemy, and I have to uh, provide common uh, responses. Then I also expect them to uh, address the issue of uh, disinformation. We, we see that uh, uh, some examples of disinformation, we have to make sure that we uh, avoid a situation where this, is, uh, this situation is, uh, is misused or taken advantage, advantage of by, by others. And, and, and thirdly, we have already started to look into more long-term consequences. What does this mean for resilience, for our society's ability to deal with uh, Mass, mass casualties. Uh, NATO already has guidelines, requirements for nations, but I think that this crisis illustrates the importance of updating, uh, revising, improving those, uh, those uh, guidelines. What will you say to those who look at what NATO is doing today within the context of this global pandemic and the fact that for years now the United States has been pushing NATO states uh, somewhat successfully uh, to meet their 2% of GDP target. Um, given what we're seeing in terms of the threat uh, to global health at this point, many people would say all that money that we're putting behind NATO, wouldn't it make more sense to put it behind improving healthcare systems? So healthcare, not hardware. Healthcare is important, and I have been a politician for many, many years myself, and I know that it's always hard to prioritize, always how to, choose, uh, to, to make decisions about allocating additional funds to healthcare or education or, or defense. Uh, but at the same time, the threats we are faced with, they don't disappear uh, because of the coronavirus. Uh, uh, I think also what we see is that uh, the military capabilities allies uh, are investing in has proven extremely uh, helpful uh, in uh, providing support to uh, the health systems, the civilian health systems, in dealing with the coronavirus crisis. You can just look at the United States, but also on the European allies, that the, the armed forces are playing a very important role. Uh, so logistics, transportation, uh, field hospitals, uh, but also helping uh, to control borders and many other uh, tasks are now uh, conducted by uh, military personnel. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.